Good evening. I'd like to call the September 27th um, town board meeting to order. Ms. Marco, will you call the roll? Mr. Christou? Present. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Present. Mr. Dotson? Present. Mr. Mastriani? Present. And Mrs. Collins? Present. Five present. Quorum is present. Uh, please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Ms. Miller Herrera will be leading. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So tonight we don't have any public hearings, so I'll be opening up privilege of the floor. I would like to remind everybody that um, we time everyone, and when he gets close to four minutes, usually around three and a half minutes, I'll raise my hand so if you can occasionally look at me, and then at four, I will hit my gavel. So, um, and the other thing is that our microphone over there, we need a new sound system, but our microphone is not working extremely well, so please make sure that you really speak closely to the mic, okay? All right. Ms. Marco, is there anyone who signed up who wishes to speak? Jim Lundy. Good evening. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember me. I was here for the immigrant, with the immigrant uh, meeting a couple months ago. Uh, have we gotten any kind of information on who's in the motel or anything like that? I'm asking supervisor. Have you, have you been able to get any kind of information? What? Uh, what seems to be happening with that is that they give most of the information goes to the county. I have not heard anything different from the county other than what was first reported. Okay. Because well, I was reading in the paper the other day, Rensselaer, to prevent these migrants from coming in here, they ha they've passed the law, and also New York City's now passed the law, giving them 28 or 30 days to stay there. I think it'd be a good idea if you did the same thing here, this way, they got to be shipped back to New York City because once it, also you'll be able to find out who's there because you can go into the hotel, say who is here, name, age, the whole nine yards. So this way, in 30 days, when you go back there, is, is, is Jose Rodriguez here? Yeah, he's got to leave. Okay, that's one way you can do it. Also, I called your office and I reported that there is a passenger bus at that place every day right around 10 o'clock. Somebody in your office did call me back, but I never heard anything. I've also notified the sheriff's office and the police department. Has anybody bothered to check that bus? Because it's an illegal bus, it has no DOT numbers, and it's also from out of state Maryland. Okay? Also, um, what about vaccination for these kids going to the schools? If I go to if I go to register my son in the school tomorrow and I don't have proof that they're vaccinated, they say, well, he can't come. So why are they being allowed to go to school with no proof of the vaccination? And I don't care that they say, well, they've all been vaccinated. There is no proof, there is no paper trail. Just like every other American citizen has to do, they should be, they should be required to do that if they're going into our schools. That's our system. And I don't see why somebody on this board doesn't bring something up to get this stuff, this stuff done. Everybody's sitting there looking at me like, you know, deer in the headlights right now. Well, sir, just to let you know, this is privilege of the board. Board members don't talk during privilege of the board. It's your opportunity to convey information to us. At the end of our meeting, we'd be more than happy to respond to your comments. Just like Thank usual. You. Mike Denny. My name is Mike Denny, 1146 Council Road. I'm the chair and the chairperson of the Rodney Fire Chiefs Association. I presented every member with a letter that I have written. I am going to read that letter uh, for the record. You got to much closer. All right. So bear with me. This letter is to inform the town. This letter is to inform you of the town fire chief's concern with the fire hydrants in the town of Rotterdam. June of 2000. 22, the Fire Chiefs Association was asked to recommend a standard specification for fire hydrants to be used within the town of Rotterdam. 
In July of 2022, the association presented presented the requested specifications to the codes and building department as well as the town supervisor's office. The specification provided, which you have an attachment with that letter, was well thought out and agreed upon by all members. The goal of the specific specification was to standardize all the town hydrants to reduce the number of makes and models currently in use. At this time, four different makes are in use. Creating a standard would reduce the maintenance cost as all hydrants would use the same parts and repair procedures. At the present time, there is no standard for hydrants and there are no models. There are models from four different manufacturers throughout the town. The uh, specification chosen by the Chiefs Association is the Watchers Fire Hydrant. This hydrant utilizes the national standard threads. This will replace the old Higby threads. This will eliminate the need for fire departments to carry additional adapters. Other items within the standard are a four-inch storage connection and a five-point operating nut and left-hand turn opening. The four-inch storage connector is compatible with the current hose lines carried by each department. The five-point operating nut helps reduce the chance of stripping the operating nut and the left-hand turn opening is more intuitive. In addition, we specified that the new hydrants be colored bright yellow so it was clearly that they are the new standard. We understand there will be a need for training within all departments, but we feel that the benefit of having a standard will outweigh the training limit. We also understand that un unless grant money is received to augment the cost of this effort, it will take 20 to 30 years to complete. In June, on June 14, 2023, after seeing no movement on the hydrants uh, specified, Chief Blessing of the Pine Grove Fire Department and myself met with the town supervisor and deputy supervisor. We had a long discussion on the specifications provided and the reasoning behind the decision. One reason is town expense. Having one hydrant to maintain is more cost efficient for operation and repair. One of the other changes requested is a left-hand turn. Our current hydrants are right-hand turn. Left-hand operation is not only national standard, but this operation also has intuitive, is intuitive to our members as they are used uh, to the standard of left turn. Left hand turn is on, right hand turn is off. In addition, our neighboring towns in which we mutually uh, response have left hand operation hydrants, the town of Gilman, town of Princetown, and the town of Colony. As you may know, there were many hydrants throughout the town in need of repair and replacement. The town is addressing the issue. Thank you. Our concern is that the hydrants that have been recent replaced do not follow the specific specifications we provided. The new hydrants have a five inch storage adapter on them. The fire departments within the town use four inch hose. This requires each department to purchase and carry another adapter to make the connection. The operation nut is not a five point, but a four point, which we believe causes undue wear and tear on the mechanism. And they have a right hand open, not left hand open, which is national standard. The Fire Chiefs Association, as the fire service professionals, are asking the board members to seriously look at the specifications we provide to the town and to consider the benefits of the recommendations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ron Schlag. So, uh, a couple things. I got a few uh, things I want to discuss real quick. I'm not going to be long. I'll be under my four minutes, so keep me honest, Molly. Um, one, I wanted to congratulate and give Mr. Mastriani some uh, kudos for Rotterdam having its first pickleball court that was installed to the Parks Committee. So, uh, that's pretty cool. We can't hear anything at all. Sorry. Is that better? Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so first pickleball court in Rotterdam, I think that's awesome. Thanks, Joe, for the work. I'm, I'm on the Parks Committee, so I, I appreciate that as well. Um, and I would like to get some feedback or just throw it out that I think that since the late Brian McGarry was an avid pickleball player, would there be a way that the town could dedicate that pickleball court to Brian McGarry? So I'm just throwing that out there. Um, I, I think it's interesting, uh, the firemen are here, and this, this wasn't planned whatsoever. So I'm going around, I'm doing some campaigning, and I'm talking to a lot of the residents. 
and a couple items that did come up with them, and one was the fire hydrant issue, especially the ones that aren't working, um, and a standardized color that they would like their hydrants painted. Now, I know that, you know, again, color's color, but you're saying they should be standard color as well. Um, but, you know, to me, it's a liability concern for these water uh, fire hydrants that are, that are covered up and not working. Uh, we saw a situation over sport time where that hydrant wasn't working, and that could have been a really big issue. Luckily, it wasn't but it can be a huge issue. So I really think that it needs to be a priority to uh, at minimum getting the ones that are broken replaced and functioning properly. Uh, third, you know, a lot of the residents, as this gentleman said earlier, are still concerned about what's happening with Super 8. Again, I come at this from a, a I'm not anti-immigrant. Uh, we're all came here as immigrants, and I appreciate that. Um, I just think it's a lack of transparency, as he's saying, and a lack of answers that are happening uh, my opinion, this is a illegal behavior, um, and I don't understand in society where we have laws why this illegal behavior is continuing to be enabled and happen. Um, and that's a concern uh, that some of the residents are, are talking to me about when I'm not talking to them. Um, so that's all I have. I'm under four minutes, but thank you all of you for being here as usual and doing your service to the community. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Kelly Weatherspoon. <clears throat> Kelly Weatherspoon, Rotterdam Junction. I just want to come tonight and thank the town of Rotterdam so much. Now that spring's over with, summer and most of fall, you still haven't fixed the property next to my business. And with the record amount of rainfall we had this summer, my parking lot was a lake all summer. It's a joke. All you have to do is level it out. That's it. I've had many people come in and say, they're going to do it. It's going to be fixed. We're going on, what, three years, four years now? And it's still the same. Again, it just has to be leveled out. It's very easy fixed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Christopher Longo. Christopher Longo, Empire Engineering, here representing the um, applicant for what's on the agenda tonight. Um, it's uh, BD Upstate, it's 1696 Crane Street. It's application for a change of zone. It's on your agenda tonight for uh, seeker coordination and to call for a public hearing. I can give a much more detailed explanation at the public hearing should you decide to hold one. But uh, I just wanted to speak on behalf of Byron, the applicant here, and um, urge you to consider the change of zone application. This is from a R2, uh, two-family zoning district to R3, multi-family. It's along Crane Street, just on the uh, northern edge of town, uh, next to the uh, line with the city of Schenectady. The property has operated as uh, three units in the past. Byron uh, put a lot of investment into the building, rebuilt the entire structure. Uh, it, from code enforcement, it was uh, determined that he could rebuild on the foundation that was there before. So if you drive down Crane Street, you see a nice new building. There are three units in this building. The application is to uh, get, a, a, get a designation officially as a multi-family R3 zoning district. Uh, to allow for a fork unit in that structure. Uh, no additional construction on the property. The neighborhood is uh, predominantly a R2, and then, uh, oddly enough, the residential uh, neighborhood to the uh, east, uh, Holton Street, is actually a B, B2 uh, district, business district, although it's mostly uh, single family residences. Uh, there are uh, also a number of multifamily dwellings in this area of Crane Street. So we would be uh, you know, continuing to be in keeping with the neighborhood uh, that you see on Crane Street. And, and again, as I mentioned, the, you, know, you, you see a nice new investment there uh, at the property and uh, you know, Byron 
would uh, like your consideration. We did also attend the planning board and received a positive recommendation from the planning board for this uh, change of zone application. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> That's it. That those are the only people who have signed up to speak. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak and just have it, have it signed up? talk about water district five because I kind of think now what's happening with the people that are coming over to motel six or motel eight what you guys are going to use that as a, a diversion from what's really happening here in Rockdale. I know I'm not going to get any answers uh, it's all right again I'm going to I'm going to ask about the four thousand four thousand Mr. Dobson calls them units I'll call them residents why were they not counted but, he won't count it in 2023. He found a boo boo. He found a mistake. Is this just a big mistake for which, if this was a private or, or another public sector employee screwing up this bad, they'd be fired in two seconds. And um, is this going on? Are we going to go back to 2021, 2022, 2020? Did, 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 did this board or the town, excuse me, um, overcharged us. And what about the other districts? Uh, how can we have any confidence in the town of Rotterdam? If you guys missed 4,000, how, how can we be confident in you guys doing the right thing for us? Again, District 5, the $34 million project. Did you guys get any, um, any funds? Uh, this is the end of September. Do you guys get any funds? I know I'm not going to get an answer, but you know what? It could be nice that in the next meeting you could answer these questions. It would really be nice. And where is the increase in the water tax for District 5? Is it going to be in the January bill? Is it going to be in the July bill? Or whoops, we don't know what the heck's going on. The $50,000 study for the police station and the justice station. What's happening with that? What's happening with it? I know I'm not going to get an answer. Okay, and I'm sorry this is boring you guys, and I'm bringing it back up again, and I'll bring it up till the day I die. Every two weeks, I will bring this up. The quarter of a million that we gave via port. Mr. Mastriani says it's because we owe them rent. Please, go back and look at the lease. We owe them nothing. We owe them nothing. And part of that lease says that that million dollars, when we got it back, we had to get whatever interest they, they procured on that, which they got interest on that. It wasn't sitting in the desk drawer for, for, for eight, nine months. And if that is the case, and, and they figured something's going on here at Rotterdam, how did they know? Who tipped them off if they were tipped off? I will keep bringing this up every single meeting about Viaport, about the quarter of a million, because we did not need to give them a quarter. Read the lease. Every one of you guys, I guarantee you, you guys haven't read the lease. I have. I have. I know Mr. Mastriani hasn't, because I had a discussion with him. And he said, I said, read your lease. I'm, I've been told that I'm not going to get the, 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 the residents of Rider is not going to get the quarter of a million dollars back. I will fight for that quarter of a million. They're already, they're already, they're already, um, they're, they already get, get a tax break. I would hope 
that by the next meeting you can answer a couple of our questions. I know you, you say you can't answer it because you don't, you don't want to cut into our four minutes. It's very simple. You answer a question and then we reclaim our, our time back. Very simple. It's not rocket science. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak but didn't sign up? My name is Steve Snyder. I live on Olene Street. And I basically have a question. Why hasn't the town filed a class action against Eric Adams, Kathy Hochul, and Doc Go to reclaim funds for bringing the illegals up here? Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak who might not have signed up? And I'm closing privilege of the floor and we'll move on to resolution. Our first resolution is resolution 284 of the year 2023. The clerk will read. To accept town board meeting minutes of September 13th, 2023. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dotson. Do I have a second? I'll second. On the question? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Yeah. Five yes. Point of order. Samantha, were you here for the last meeting? Oh, yeah. Yes. You need to abstain okay. from the vote then. So the I hasn't, I hadn't been advised of that in the house, but I thought of the. Yeah, it's just general practice. I know it's just the minutes, but you weren't here. So, do you want me to go? Yeah, take the roll. Just retain. Oh, sure, no problem. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Abstain. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Four yes, one abstain. Motion uh, passes. Resolution passes. Resolution 285 of the year 2023, clerk will read. To appoint Maria Rapperside to the position of payroll audit clerk. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. I'll second the motion. Second by Mr. Christou. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes, and I believe Mrs. Rafferty is there, so I'll give her a hand. <laughs> Next resolution is resolution 286 of the year 2023. The clerk will read. To appoint Toy Zim Absal to the position of water and sewer maintenance worker. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second the motion. Second by Mr. Christou. On the question, the clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes, and I believe Mr. Abdul is here. Would you like to stand? Our next resolution is Resolution 287 of the year 2023. The clerk will read. To approve budget transfers to the 2023 budget. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Do I have a motion? I'll move. Motion by Mr. Christou. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Dodson. On the question? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 288 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. Establishing water sewer rents and contract assessments for the year 2023 for the water sewer districts. Is there any discussion? I'd like to state that these are the collections that were done this year. Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Our res next resolution is resolution 289 of the year 2023. The clerk will read. To declare senior citizen equipment obsolete. <coughs> is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. I'll second. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. 
Resolution 290 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. To negotiate and execute an agreement with Bot Veterinary, Veterinary Clinic. Okay. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. Okay. And the question? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 291 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. To authorize the purchase of one pickup truck for the Parks and Recreation Department. Okay. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Mastriani. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Dodson. On the question? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 292 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. Authorize change order number three with William J. Keller and Sons for the sewer district number seven extension number two project. Is there any discussion? Okay. I'll make a motion. Okay. Motion by Mr. Dotson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 293 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. To negotiate and execute an agreement with Barton and Judas for asbestos monitoring and construction support services of the Bay Group building. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 294 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. Requesting bids for the Bay Group Building Asbestos Abatement and Demolition. Okay. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 295 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. To amend resolution 296.21 relating to the use of ARPA funds. Okay. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dotson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Uh, I abstained on the underlying resolution 296.21 and therefore I continue to abstain. Okay. And Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Four yes, one abstain. Resolution passes. Resolution 296 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. To authorize the purchase of one pickup truck for the wastewater treatment plant. Okay. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 297 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. To declare lead agency for seeker review for the change of zone from agricultural A1 to general business B2 on tax parcel number 57-3-7.112 and 57.7-1-1.2 known as 900 and 880 Dewaynesburg Road. Okay, is there any discussion? Uh, discussion on this again is for clarity and transparency to the public is for uh, uh, new BJ's uh, located at the exit 25A uh, through A exchange. Is there any other discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 298 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. To accept an award bid for Rotterdam Town Hall building renovations. Okay. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dotson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question? The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? 
I'm not prepared to spend an upward of $1.4 million on the renovation of this building until we have a better idea of what we're doing with our police facilities, so I'm going to vote no. Mr. Dawson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Four yes, one no. Resolution passes. Resolution 299 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. To, to declare lead agency for seeker review for the change of zone from a two-family residential R2 to multi-family R3 on tax parcel number 59.6-2-2 known as 1696 Crane Street. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. A motion by Mr. Christou. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution number 300 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. To call for a public hearing on the proposed introductory law blank of 2023 to amend Chapter 270 zoning of the town code relating to a change of zone from a two-family residential R2 to a multi-family R3. Okay, is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. motion. I'll second the motion. Motion by Mr. Mastriani, seconded by Mr. Christou on the question. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Um, I happen to have driven by this building. Uh, the, the, the builder did an absolute beautiful job in, in, re, in, in demolishing the old property and rebuilding a brand new building. I think this is, I don't see any negative side to this, so I, I'm going to absolutely vote yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 301, the year 2023, the clerk will read. To negotiate and execute an agreement with Barton Judas for design services for the installation of a new garage door and opening inside the Water District Number 5 generator building. Okay. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Master Annie? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and the question? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 302, the year 2023, the clerk will read. To authorize change order 4A for contract one of the salt storage and yard waste processing facility project. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani on the question. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution number 303 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. To negotiate and execute an agreement with Barton Judas for professional services for the water system improvements project. Okay. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution number 304 of the year 2023. Clerk will read. To authorize the purchase of equipment and parts for the wastewater treatment plant truck. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. And resolution 305 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. To schedule a special meeting of the town board. Okay. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second by Ms. Miller Herrera. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. And that concludes our resolutions for this evening. We'll now move on to liaison reports. Do any of the board members wish to speak uh, on liaison? No. Okay. Do any of the board members wish to speak about uh, under miscellaneous? Um, Madam Supervisor, just uh, to acknowledge what Mr. Schlag said, um, I think it'd be a wonderful idea to name the pickleball court after uh, um, our, our friend uh, Mr. Brian McGeary, the late Brian McGeary. I think that's a great idea. So do I.
Does anyone else have anything else under miscellaneous? Um, well, I can uh, address Mr. Lundy's uh, comments. Uh, it's my understanding that uh, people at the motel in Rotterdam and Colony throughout New York State, throughout this country, are claiming asylum, which, care, which gives them certain privacies and privileges that we don't have access to their identification. And DOCO, the agency that is managing their welfare, is guarding um, the identity of the peoples there uh, very closely. Now, there's about 80 children that have registered to go to school in Mahasin. Um, so we have names and information uh, for them. But we don't know the names and information of the people that were there, and we don't have any, no one in the government at the town, county, or state level, perhaps at the federal level, has an information about exactly how many people are there and how many people have been there over the course of the last two months. We don't know. Um, immigration over the southern border increases in the fall. The summertime is the slowest time. Um, so this uh, pipeline to New York City and then upstate, um, the pressure on that pipeline is not going down. Um, and we do not have a handle of trying to put a cork in Super 8 and, and, and stopping what is there. And um, that's, that's all I have for now. I just want to follow up. Kelly, if you uh, stay after the meeting, I just want to get together with you. It's our understanding that the town has been down to your property a couple times. I just want to find out who's been there and why nothing's getting done. Okay. Okay? We, we, the town, we do, uh, the engineer does have a design for a berm along the edge of uh, the town property and your property to uh, or, or a swale, a swale or a berm, whatever, you know, and we're putting in a new roadway. We added an additional drainage uh, site um, in front of there to, to minimize it. So we'll, we'll speak after as. Uh, again, I want to take an opportunity to address a few of uh, Brenda's questions that she had tonight. And I think we've talked about these before. Uh, this issue relative to units doesn't go back uh, very far, uh, 2021 to 2022, uh, coming into the office. Uh, the units used to be based on half alarm. That was changed to a unit uh, charge. Um, you know, why was there such a difference? Uh, there's been a significant amount of time and effort, as I mentioned in previous board meetings when I've answered this question. Uh, we, we did an audit on the units. Uh, we were coming into a very large capital improvement project, uh, looked at these units in detail. Um, I mean, I mean detail. There's all, over, like we said, 12,000 uh, units here. The, differ the difference was in the commercial units, as I mentioned, uh, they're basically called equivalent dwelling units. We look at the, the usage of a single family home estimate, because we don't meter here. Um, and then we look at usage from commercial meters, and we actually meter those. It's very easy for us to do a quick check. If there's a, you know, a use of 50,000 gallons for a typical uh, residential unit, and um, they're using 500,000 gallons in a commercial account, there's 10 units. Uh, those units were not included in the original uh, rolls that went out. Um, and in our favor, uh, it ended up reducing the amount of um, charge um, that was originally established in the budget. So there was actually a reduction. And again, I can only reiterate why did that occur? Because we actually looked into the details of the change that was made from ad valorem to units, and then get into the details and audited the units because we're obviously proceeding with a $34 million capital improvement project. Before we get into the capital improvement project, we wanted to make sure we had the correct equivalent dwelling units. Why does that matter? Brenda brings up a good point. We had a $34 million project. Uh, we're potentially looking at a zero interest rate on it. That's not been confirmed because we're still in the funding. Based on a 30-year project, you can do the math quick. Um, 12,000 units works out to be roughly about $94, I believe. is the number I calculated previously. You know, we continue to say $94.44. You know, so we're talking somewhere in the $95 to $100 range. That's what it's working out to be. Um, where does the funding stand? 
Um, <clears throat> funding happens on these projects uh, throughout the summer up until like the end of July. The town again, uh, this is our second year in a row, submitted for um, a WIA grant. Uh, that application did indeed go in not only for the water improvement project, but it also went in for the wastewater treatment plant. Um, usually these decisions are made around the holidays um, so that municipalities get a Christmas present. That comes out of the governor's office. You know, we're going to be uh, waiting to see if Rotterdam is in line for, for this grant. Uh, we significantly improved our grant from the last, last one, tried again to have more of the uh, where we get targeted points, and so we think our score should be up on this, but it's not in our control. It's in uh, the state, state government's control. We'll see where we stand when the time comes. Um, there was a question about, well, how this is going to work out. When would we be taxed? Uh, part of the change from 2021 to 2022, again, going from ad valorem, established two different periods in the town of Rotterdam that you would receive bills for water, or in my mind, sewer, if you're in a sewer district. Uh, the January bill is debt service. Uh, debt service needs to be paid back. There's a schedule, 30-year schedule for debt service. That's not something that you want to have an unknown if you're going to get the payment in. It's usually done on a tax bill in January. So the debt service associated with this project, and this is for Water District Number 5, which is basically the entire Rotterdam, Upper Rotterdam does not include Rotterdam Junction, which is Districts 3 and 4. <coughs> Uh, when this goes to a closing in a couple years from now, we got to pay back that note. On your January bill, you're going to see the debt service associated with this project. Your June bill is operation and maintenance. Uh, we're, we're into budget time. Uh, we have a budget that's been established for that specific district. Uh, that, that too is based on units. We come up with whatever the budget is, and that's done obviously for each board. You divide it by the number of units, that gives you the charge that each uh, household would see in their June bill for operation and maintenance. Uh, police station update. Brenda, I believe, brought this up in the last meeting. I approached our consultants on this and said, hey, we're ready. It's September, October. Uh, we need to have uh, your preliminary um, assessment of uh, what we're going to do for the police and courts. They've assured me that they're going to schedule a meeting with us. We need to have the meeting so we can give you guys the update. But that is forthcoming. We definitely want to be in a position uh, in 2023 to know what is the direction of the town relative to the police and courts. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to say? Yep, just one more. <clears throat> uh, I would like to thank the... Uh, the firemen that are here tonight relative to bringing to the town's attention the need to standardize uh, on meters. From the town standpoint, we agree wholeheartedly with that. You know, as the development continues in our town, we do see um, non-standardization, which we don't think is good. Uh, we do like the uh, standardization for a watcher's hydrant. Um, we did indeed meet with, the, uh, with some of the chiefs uh, relative to the hydrants. Um, you know, they gave us a spec that's up here. Uh, in that meeting, we had extensive conversations relative to the merits of what's in that uh, spec, and we agreed to all of them except for one. And, and the condition that we didn't agree to was the direction of uh, opening or closing a hydrant. And as was mentioned tonight, there's all standards that we grow up with relative to how things open and close, righty tighty, lefty loosey. The town of Rotterdam, many decades ago, decided not to use that standard. The town of Rotterdam's not the only one that didn't agree to go with that standard. There's many municipalities out throughout the state of New York that has conventions, their own standards, okay, that don't have the righty tighty lefty loosey standard. Uh, not only do we not have it on hydrants, the town of Rotterdam has on every hydrant, there's a hydrant shutoff valve. They do not have that standard as well. They're not the righty tighty lefty loosey. Our mean valves out in our distribution system, same thing, not the righty tighty lefty loosey. So in our water district number five, we have about 1,550 hydrants. Are you guys see them uh, spread out through the town of Rotterdam. Uh, when we had the conversation with the chiefs, it came down to, do we want to be in a position at this point in time that we want to change the direction of how you open that hydrant? Um, and there was a very good conversation relative to the pros and cons of opening a hydrant. And you know, we think, hey, what's the big deal? You just go up and open a hydrant. Well, it is a big deal. 
You know, when you try to open a hydrant in the wrong direction, you can snap off a piece of the stem so that it does not work when you need it to work. So the way around identifying, hey, geez, you're on a hydrant that's opposite what 1,550 hydrants are in the community, it's going to be yellow. So in an emergency, when a fireman pulls up to that hydrant, not only does he have to concentrate on the fact that, hey, he might be entering you know, a building, or, or hey, I've got to get on a hydrant, he has to reconcile in his mind that that's a yellow hydrant. You need to open it in a different direction than the rest of the hydrants that are in our system. Keep in mind there's 1,550 hydrants that we have right now. <clears throat> we, we provided some information to the Chiefs relative to what is the cost to replace. Let's just say, hey, we were lucked out, we got a grant to replace them all. You're, you're talking something that's 12 to $15 million to replace 1,550 hydrants all at once. The comment that I made to the Chiefs was, the town of Rotterdam hasn't done a major capital improvement project here since the 50s. That is anywhere near the, you know, the $30 million that we're proposing right now. Everyone in this town clearly knows that our water system uh, has been in disrepair, uh, specifically hydrants. Uh, we have many hydrants that are out in our distribution system that don't work, that need to work. So while we're doing this $34 million project, this is the perfect opportunity to determine is the town of Rotterdam going to change the direction of how we open and close hydrants? Keep it in mind, many factors. Uh, you know, you could be on your street, uh, you could have all red hydrants on your street, there could be one yellow hydrant that could be in the first year, okay? Um, that, that'll be the hydrant that now uh, is the correct, quote, standards, righty tighty. Lefty Lucy, so it's going to open to the left. Um, we have to reconcile in our mind then for the next, I, they project in here, I think it was 15 to 20 years. I gave them a projection of 30 to 50 years because I know how the towns maintain their water system over the years. Um, so, so it really comes down to are we going to just change this convention back so that, quote, we're correct in the fact that we're righty tighty, lefty Lucy? Um, there's, there's a lot of consideration for that. Not only does the fire department use hydrants, we have a water sewer department, a water department that flushes these hydrants every year. They maintain all those valves that are under the ground. Uh, so, so not only should a decision be made in my mind from the fire department standpoint, it needs to be made by the water uh, sewer operators that are out there every day working on the system. So we've had the conversation with the chiefs, you know, at this point in time, you know, my recommendation again is, uh, you know, we have a meeting, uh, you know, the uh, other board members obviously uh, would have an opportunity uh, to state their opinion of how we should uh, move forward on this. Uh, but I wholeheartedly do agree with the chiefs that we need to standardize uh, on a hydrant. Up to this point in time, we've agreed upon everything except do we really want to change at this point in time the direction of that hydrant knowing for the next 30 to 50 years we're going to have some hydrants that open one direction and some hydrants that open another direction. And until that's reconciled, once that gets reconciled, I think it would be pretty straightforward to standardize on hydrants. Uh, uh, if, if I may, just to add on that, first of all, I'd like to thank Mike Denny for putting together this very informative letter. Um, and again, this might be a moot point, but we, know, we, you know, we were informed Gittle in Princeton and Colony I've already met this standard, is that correct, Mike? They usually, yes. Okay. What about some of the areas that border Rotterdam? Niskayuna, City is connected to Glenville, Scotia. Are they on the same path to look at this City the same way? City of Schenectady is our water system that comes right up Broadway, um, Gillen Avenue, Sidness area. It's the old Hickey Cut hydrants, so we're going with the white caps. Okay. Our hydrants in the town have two different colors. We have red and white, and we have red and blue. Red and white are the old Higby cut, the old city line, which is in the center part of the town. And the red and blue are on in South Schenectady, Carmen, um, Shanwe, uh, well, Rhino Junction is its own. That's correct. It's its own uh, entity out there. But City of Schenectady, no, we, they are the way they are. They're, 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 they're the right hand. So it almost sounds like what we have in town is a first generation and a second generation hydrant. Okay. okay. Um, and I think all of us agree that first and foremost, we must address the ones that don't work. 
and the town has done that. Right, and we should address them. Anything moving forward, uh, I think we also agree, it is the spec, okay? That, that you know, if, if this is the spec, then so be it. My only concern is, as Mr. Dodson said, the valves underneath are not going to change. So you're on a yellow hydrant, you're going lefty loosey, righty tighty, you're on a red hydrant, you're going, you know, right to open, left to close, but that all the valves on the underground are all going to stay the same. Yes. So, um, you know, as far as, so if I'm, I'm, again, just to, to educate myself, all these specs that are on this list can work either left hand or right hand, that's our determination as a, as a community, correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, you know, I'll let the people that are a little more knowledgeable work on that. But. With that note of them replacing hydrants, the new hydrants that they've put in on Morival Road and Princetown Road are a watchers hydrant, national standard thread, right hand turn with a five inch storage connection. We carry four inch storage connection. So the spec, whatever they're using to buy those hydrants, isn't even correct to the old. So the, I would say, just, just, just so we're clear and transparent, those hydrants were purchased in previous administration a couple of years ago as part of a capital improvement project where it was not coordinated with the consulting engineer at the time of what the hydrant should actually be. And you are indeed correct. They specified hydrants that had a five inch. The town board, when we came on board, we, we got into the details of hydrants, as you know. And when we just recently, over this past spring and summer, uh, procured hydrants, we procured exactly the correct hydrant that you have on here, except for the opening direction. And at that point time, as you know, we were getting into the discussion about, hey, the chiefs have met, and uh, as you indicated, over time, um, and this is very typical for many fire departments throughout the state of New York and the country for that matter, you know, we go back in the 60s and 70s when uh, water systems um, were being put in, you know, the fire departments, again, did dictate a lot of what hybrids would be, you know, rightfully so. You know, at that time, the chiefs did standardize on a standard that the town has now, okay? However, as was clearly stated, there's all these different versions of threads that are on hydrants, the operating nut that's on the top, and as requested, uh, rightfully so by the chiefs, is that that's ridiculous. You know, there should be some sort of standardization uh, on hydrants. You know, national standard thread, the five five uh, star operating knot, uh, two no, two two and a half inch hose nozzles, a four inch with the stores connection. They're all standards now. They're real, I think, an issue. And it's not an issue, again, what I look at is you would never want to make a willy-nilly decision on, hey, we're talking about changing 1,550 hydrants, and we're going to change every new one that comes in to replace an old one. We're changing the direction on. And, and I think, again, the, the chiefs are coming from, uh, you know, a point of view that, hey, we want to just, over time, we want Rotterdam, and I say over time, it's decades, 30 to 40 years from now, we want to gradually transition to this convention that's righty tighty lefty loosey. Yeah, I, I don't see any issue with that, other than the fact that we have to recognize for the next 30 to 50 years that every time the fire department pulls up to a hydrant, they got to recognize that that yellow one is the lefty. Okay, all the other ones they get on. There's confusion in that. Okay, in my mind, and, and that needs to be reconciled before we just come up here as a town board and say, hey, we're all for you. Then the next issue I have with it is we standardize on hydrants anytime we want. Ten years from now, this town board or the Chiefs Association, new guys could come in and say, hey, what were they thinking back ten years ago when they changed these hydrants? Okay, to a different standard. Now we have hydrants that turn right, we have hydrants that turn left. I personally want no part of that, okay? I, I look at it as it would be great. The ideal, and I think uh, the Chiefs agreed with us at the time, if we had between 12 to $15 million and we could change all these hydrants out at once, I would wholeheartedly agree. Agree in the fact that, hey, we now have this convention that everyone knows. I'm not so certain that it would be um, prudent in our mind to take $15 million given all the other improvements that are needed in this water system. And, and we did do a very comprehensive report. 
As I tell people all the time, they say, hey, Rodney, we're spending $34 million on a water system improvement project. I said, yeah, that's now. That's the first priority phase. There was a recommendation in just water district number five alone to do $100 million worth of improvements in our water system. You know, we're not touching water storage tanks that need to be painted, need to be maintained. You can't have steel up in the air for decades without putting paint on it, okay? Uh, and there's many, many other issues in our, uh, in our town that need to be addressed. We have lots of asbestos met pipes in our system. We have an EPA uh, mandate that's coming out for next year that says we've got to identify all lead services in our water system, including the use of uh, any plumbing, solder, etc. That, that's a big task that the town has to take on, on it. Um, so, in light of all this, we need to evaluate is it wise to change the direction of hydrants at this time? That's the bottom line. Question? Yes. So, when do we start? Uh, I, I think when the you longer say, we wait, the more it costs. The question is, is do we have to change it? I feel that we do. The chiefs feel that we do. And that, that's a valid point from your guys' standpoint. I, as I indicated in the meeting, that needs to be vetted some more to determine if we're going down that, that road. We want to make sure everyone indeed, including the town board and the town workers, are on the same page. Because when a decision made is made, there's major ramifications for implementation. That's, that's all I'm saying. And I, was very, I think I was very good about our position of where we stand. I would love to be able to say at this meeting right now, Mike, that let's standardize on hydrants because I totally agree 100% with everything that you said. The only sticking point we had is I'm concerned at this point in time changing the direction of the opening of the hydrant. That is, my, from my standpoint, my only concern, and I'm just asking to allow it to be vetted more so that everyone is on the same page and knows that this is a long-term endeavor at, at some cost. That's all I'm saying. Well, I would like to meet with all the town board members and come to my fire district and I'll hand you the hydrant bag and see how you like it and how all the adapters and stuff we carry to make one hydrant in this town. Well, so, so let's be clear, let's be clear, is when you say you're using an adapter, you're talking about frets. <clears throat> we, we have no issue with the fact that we're standardized on the NST, National Standard Thread. That no, is no, no, not no, an no. issue. That's not, not an issue our, that... Not all our right. hydrants in this town have storage connections. I understand that. But however, this standard would indeed, any new hydrant that the town has bought in the last year, is indeed this spec, exactly the spec that you asked for, except for the opening of the hydrant. Okay. And it is something that needs to be addressed, as we indicated. We want to move forward. Okay. Well, I invite every one of you to come to my fire department, or any one of the fire departments, to pick up the hydrant bag and dump it out and see how much is in that hydrant bag that we have to go through. Hydrant. Can, can you explain that relative to the opening and closing of a hydrant? Because I believe that's the only issue we're talking about. I carry five different wrenches to open hydrants in this town. And is that because of the operating dock? Yes. Okay. And we know this new standard indeed will correct that problem. What it doesn't correct out of all these conditions that we're asking for in here is the opening direction. That is the only sticking point. Yes, sir. If you put something in eventually all the same. Everybody's going to know it. Just like driving down a road. Everybody knows you drive on the right hand side of the road. You don't drive down on the left. So if you're going to replace, just say 50 fire hydrants, go with what the Chiefs are saying. Go with the, le the left handed threads to open them. And after a while, everybody will know they're all left handed threads. And yes, if you have one that goes on the right, you paint that one yellow. But you don't put new ones in, maybe right, maybe left. Go no. the no, These I, guys are professionals. They know threads. what they're doing. I don't think that's what we're saying. Yeah, yeah we're I not think, saying that. We're talking about the opening direction. Yeah, I think there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of agreement as far as standardization. You're spot on. From what I'm understanding from, from the deputy supervisor, it, it, we're, we're like, we're 90% there. The only, the only dialogue left is can we agree or disagree on left or right? May I make a suggestion that, that certain people on the board get together with the chiefs and one way or another make a decision by the, say the end of the year good bad or different put a timeline on it so you you guys we can move we can start ordering tomorrow what's up yeah but I, you know I'm, I'm one person and I again I, I think that I, I think that 
remember, there's also the DPW piece that maintains it, and I think that could be Mr. Dotson's concern as far as the direction. The standardization, the, the other stuff, and you're still going to have to carry that value because this is a 30-year project, <coughs> correct? So again, for me, I, I, I'm not knowledgeable. I'm going to default to Mr. Dodson, who knows about water, and you who I've known for 30 years, and I trust your judgment. What I'm saying is whatever we all decide, let's, let's, let's put a deadline on it so you know, whether one side's a theory or the other side's theory is done, by the end of the year we have a direction and we can start ordering them. Right. Is that fair? That's fair. Yes. And I agree that that needs to happen sooner than later uh, because, again, a contract by the end of this year um, is going to go out the bed relative to repairing some of these hydrants that have been uh, out there uh, for too long. They have not been repaired. And there are some valves that we need, critical valves that we need to repair in our distribution system to allow us to isolate uh, the system uh, during major water main breaks so that not, we're not taking out large sections of the town uh, when we have a water main break. So, so we agree that that's why we're having this dialogue at this point in time. That decision needs to be made and it needs to be just made for the right reason. I know Mr. Blessing had his hand up too, but if you want to wait, whichever one of you want to go first. I, I, we know this is going to take 30 to 50 years, okay? And at the same time, over that 30 or 50 years, just like the last 30 or 50 years, we have to look at the hydrants for what color it is. So in order to cut down on the number of adapters and everything else, and the training of people, your water department and your DPW department has how many people? Under 10. Under 10. So you have 10 people to train, okay? And they aren't working under pressure. There's eight fire districts in the town of Rotterdam. Let's just say, 30 members apiece. That's 240 members that we have to train. In the heat of the moment, what does everybody go back to? Righty, tighty, lefty, loosey. And we've seen this numerous times. We've all agreed as chiefs, okay, way back in July, in June of last year, I sent the spec to the board last July 12th. It's now September of 23. Over a year, almost a year and a half later, and this is just coming to light, that's kind of ridiculous for the town board to sit on it that long. We've already talked about this in the Chiefs Association. Why do we have to keep hashing it over and talking it over again? It makes no sense. So as a commissioner of District 7, Sean Oate, what you're saying is until we agree on a spec, you're going to keep replacing the broken items with the ones that are considered wrong, with the 5-inch storage adapter on the front. I don't think we're going to replace anything until we can agree on a spec. No. Well, just yeah, you just let me know, are there any hydrants that we have hydrants in stock right now, correct? Those are the current standard, town's current standard. And of course, yes, if a motor vehicle takes down a hydrant, we are obligated to replace it, and we have that replacement. The, I'm not discounting that. My point is, we as the department were set up for four inch, like Mike had said, and now we had to go and buy four inch to five inch adapters and inflict another cost on the taxpayers. So why should our residents have to pay for something that the town messed up? Uh, I agree. You, well, the residents of our town should not have to pay for five inch that should have been four inch doors. And again, that's why I agree with the Chiefs, is the fact that standardization needs to happen. That's right. And the hydrants that we are buying are indeed 4-inch. This dialogue all relates back to how we're going to open and close hydrants, and we are getting ready That's to buy many hydrants. Within my district, there are hydrants that have a 5-inch front connection. Understood. And I had to buy two adapters, one for each truck, and we're looking at getting a third. Those inflict a cost on our residents. Okay. And, those, and they're your residents too. It's those, all the same residents. Those costs, Why should we have to pay for that? Okay, those costs have been incurred by you because 
we have those hydrants, okay? We have all these different threaded hydrants that are in our system that you guys are all equipped to get on. The town of Rotterdam didn't establish the standards relative to your threads. They've been in existence from the fire department going back decades, okay? The issue at hand at this point in time is you're standardizing on everything that you want to standardize on from the fire department and we want to standardize on from the town. The only disagreement at this point in time, are we going to change 1,550 hydrants from one opening direction from a convention to another opening direction? So let me just, let me address the issue again. Is Rotterdam the only town that's in this situation? Not at all. City of Schenectady, Albany, Glens Falls, Rome, all these large areas have hydrants that are indeed just like Rotterdam's, okay? They're the opposite standard because people in the past agreed that, hey, I want to be different from my neighbor. I, I don't want my neighboring fire department maybe to be on my hydrant. I don't want uh, a contractor to get on my hydrant. So they came with different threads. That's not the issue here. I think the, the, that's been resolved. We are all in agreement on what the thread should be. We're all in agreement, again, on uh, the standardization of the hydrant from the, uh, the two and a half inch, the four inch stores, the operating knob, the color yellow. But we want to, again, have more dialogue on, do we want to change 1,550 hydrants over the next uh, 30 to 50 years and change that direction? Because it's just a convention. That's all it is, it's a convention that we established, the town of Rotterdam and the town of Rotterdam Fire Districts established decades ago. Mr. Deputy Supervisor, how many how many hydrants do we have in stock, do you know? Oh, I got to leave, Jim, probably under 10. Yes. yes. All right, can we agree that until this is resolved, we're not gonna buy any more hydrants? Yes, yeah, and we're not, okay. you know, because we do need to agree on a standard before we go out and move forward with the project that we discussed earlier is we're prepared to go and replace uh, many hydrants in the system as part of the capital improvement project. We indeed want to be on the same page with the fire department when that decision is made and what's specs. And the check that we have have all the specs except how we all check. Okay. okay. Um, this, I don't think this is going to be solved tonight. What I would like to do is any of the fire chiefs, and I know some of you work full-time jobs, um, you know, during the day. So what I would suggest is that maybe you give my office a call tomorrow and uh, kind of give me a couple of dates that you would be available. I'll make sure that the board members are aware. Even uh, we'll either have to call a special meeting if you want all of us there because it has to be open to the public or we can uh, meet two at a time. Uh, you know, but I would suggest that um, we're not going to come to a decision tonight. I would like you to speak, though, because you've been very patient waiting. Thank you. Um, so what Commissioner Squire was trying to get at was the adapters that were purchased by our fire department. Um, are there more of those five-inch hydrants in stock that are going to be placed in service? No. And would it be reasonable, since the town was the ones who originally purchased those five-inch hydrants, for the town to have also purchased those adapters for the fire department? Because that was not something we had in stock before. A question on that, Mr. Dotson. Yes. Can that five-inch source be changed to a four-inch? It can. Could we get them permanently? And we have gotten a quote to do that, Mike, just to let you know. Right. Okay. okay. Jim? Any of the new hydrants that we have in stock currently, they were shipped with a five-inch storts on them, and the manufacturer's coming and changing out the, the five-inch and putting a four-inch on it before they're installed. Okay. Thank you. This is a good Yeah, this is a I mean, yeah, like I said, we are trying. Uh, these were purchased a while ago, and uh, the ones I think on Prince Town Road actually were under the contractor. I know when we, uh, like, I think we're putting a hydrant in on the, um, by the salt shed, in case God forbid there's a fire, and we made sure that it matched these standards except for how it opens. To me, that's the biggest sticking point. How are these Sounds like the only something. It is the only It is the only Okay. So I, I really do. I encourage you to call tomorrow. Uh, you know, every every chief uh, uh, or uh, commissioner, whoever wants to be involved, and just give me at least two dates that perhaps dates and times that you're going to be available, and we'll see if we can set up an appointment. Um, you know, and, and speak to the board either as a whole, we can call a special meeting, let people know, or um, you can meet with two at a time, okay? All right, is there anything else anyone has on miscellaneous? 
Okay. I'll make a motion. Motion to adjourn. by Mr. Dodson to adjourn. Do I have a second? second by Mr. Cristel. All in favor? Aye. Aye.